the importance of interfaith uh, activism or interfaith awareness uh, became so uh, alive to me as on 9-11 I was working on Capitol Hill at that time and so the um, the plane attack on the Pentagon uh, the likely plane attack on either the White House or the Congress um, as, as certainly the third plane had a destination um, became so very very real to me and uh, so for ten years I have tried to be engaged more in interfaith uh, activities and dialogue myself um, I became part of CBB um, uh, about two years ago um, in this was part of the commemoration uh, CBB or Clergy Beyond Borders uh, has constructed um, a caravan event uh, beginning from Washington, um, heading through the southeast um, into the Raleigh Durham area, Greenville, Spartanburg, Atlanta, Chattanooga, Nashville, um, up all the way north into Detroit, then across Pennsylvania and back into Frederick, Maryland. Um, I happen to be on the executive advisory board of CBB. Um, I'm a Lutheran clergy person, as you know. Clergy Beyond Borders. It is an intentionally interfaith uh, organization. Um, it is one that is uh, based in Maryland and Washington, D.C. as kind of its headquarters area. Um, Muslims, Jews, Christians, uh, Eastern traditions um, are all part of its leadership makeup. Um, and as part of its emphasis or part of its work is to, uh, in, in as many ways possible, encourage interfaith discourse and dialogue. Some people probably are aware that um, uh, directly after 9-11, there was a tremendous interest in trying to understand better um, non-Western and non-Christian faiths. I think it would be fair to suggest that there's probably been diminished interest corresponding with increased activities of violence against Jewish and Muslim uh, communities, facilities, houses of worship, um, around the country in the past half decade. I think it's an important witness and one which is uh, perhaps not the most popular but um, I believe needs to be made. Um, there are too many examples of this type of um, intolerance and violence that goes against peoples of other faiths. We'll be discussing uh, how interfaith dialogue discourse may happen in mm -hmm. kind of a, um, a, a teaching kind of way, but also since there will be, um, uh, and this is done on purpose, um, the presentations are not solos. These are presentations with people of other faiths. Okay. And in other words, we are giving our um, our testimony, if you will, or a sense of, of witness on um, how this has become important in our own lives. A kind of physical example of um, interfaith dialogue um, right there on the spot. Okay. Um, so, uh, and, and some of the destinations um, have been purposely chosen for having had um, places of violent behavior in the past. Okay. So, uh, a little bit of an advocative yeah. um, component to this as well as a teaching one. It should be at least recognized that um, we have some ways to go here uh, in our own sort of uh, country um, to understand some of those basic rights of, of religion and religious freedom. I have a couple of students who, like me, um, are interested in where religion and politics kind of you know, come together mm -hmm. um, and uh, if, if you know they have the time and availability I will probably take them uh, with me to the uh, Greenville Spartanburg event um, and bring them back as, as kind of a uh, way of, of creating awareness.